Hi, it's Pris again, and this word is called the Narcissistic Tuning of America. I woke up with these words going through my mind over and over. And um, and my normal thing then is to um, search out whatever the Lord directs. The Bible says that we war not against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers. Ephesians 6, 12 to 13 in the Amplified says it this way, for we are wrestling with flesh and we are not wrestling with flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents, but against the despotisms, the powers, the master spirits who are the world rulers of this present darkness, against the spirit forces of wickedness and heavenly supernatural sphere. Therefore, put on God's complete armor that you may be able to resist and stand your ground on the evil day of danger and having done all the crisis demands to stand firmly in your place. And it says, so that we may stand in the evil day of danger. From the beginning of time on earth, there have been lessons after lessons after lessons of being one another's keeper. From Cain and Abel to today, the enemy works to divide, to divide us from God and each other. To take our focus off both of these things is his all in all to make us self-focused and keep us defending self, focusing on what we want, what we deserve, what's in it for us, to protect ourselves, to appeal to our baser instincts and the self-life within, which is the basis, by the way, of Satanism so that we don't fulfill relationship with God nor relationship with each other in appropriate ways that the Word of God calls for. Um, I said that thing about Satanism because the I once picked up the Satanic Bible in um, the bookstore to see what, what was in it, and the first, almost the first, within the first couple of pages are these rules like um, 13 Commandments or something like that. Uh, and it's all about doing what self wants. All right. Satan is a twister. He twisted the words of God from the beginning, and he twists your motives. Uh, he is the father of lies. So how could such a being bring down God's plan for intimacy with us and intimacy with each other, but to create the opposite effect in our human flesh? To use our own fleshly desires to defeat us and to defeat our intimacy with God so as not to fulfill his great desires for us as human beings. Satan has done this in every culture on earth to keep man focused on self and what self wants, needs, desires, to keep God from man and man from God and to destroy the human race. Self divides us from God and from others. Micah 6, eight says, He has shown you, O man, what is good and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. I'm, i got to move this for a minute because of my arm getting a little tired here. The Satanic Bible, which I found in one bookstore in town, um, and I told you had 13 commandments, all focused on, you know, self, you know, if you, if it feels good, do it is basically what it was about. Getting what self wants regardless of any of God's commands. Years ago, I ran across a book, a quote from an earlier book by one Ruth Paxson, um, writing on the selves from her book, Life on the Highest Plane by Moody Press in um, 1928. And um, you can see that at www.upstreamca.org slash selfs dot html. Um, she aptly describes self-focus, uh, so it's a worthy read of what has happened in the world and in the church, and God said it would be like this, didn't he? In 2 Timothy 3, um, he outlines what people would be like in the end times, and pretty much we're seeing that now. This book was published after Wilson signed the Federal Reserve Act, for which he repented on his deathbed, and after the beginning of turning America towards the long-desired utopia of Atlantis, the goal from the beginning by Freemasons and other secret societies linked to them. The trouble is that when people worship Satan and his minions, that focus always brings self-destruction, because idolatry brings the curses of Deuteronomy down on us, lest you think that I exaggerate about America, go here to view the early plans of secret societies. Just look up Secret Beginnings movie on YouTube. Ruth Paxson's first description category was self-will. 
She says, self-will, we have turned everyone to his own way. The flesh wants its own way and is determined to have it, even if it defies and disobeys God and overrides others. I will is the ap alphabet out of which self fashions its language of life. Here you can see that lifting self up is the same as at the Tower of Babel. At the Tower of Babel, God had said to scatter themselves across the globe and procreate. But a group of people under Nimrod rebelled against the God plan. They decide instead to settle together there and build a town to heaven and make a name for themselves, an entirely self-centered effort. And it's interesting to me um, that the Freemasons uh, laud Nimrod <laughs> in, in their um, books and um, rituals, and he was the author of Rebellion um, in that hour that he was living. Genesis 11, 3 to 4 says, Then they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They had brick for stone, and they had asphalt for mortar. And they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. You know, why should we have to do what God says? There is a direct connection between Freemasonry and the ancient Babylonian mystery religion from which the ancient pagan religions of Egypt, Persia, Greece, and Rome eventually developed. It all goes back to Nimrod, who the Freemasons view as the true originator of their order. Nimrod was a great Mesopotamian king, Ha, who founded that city of Babylon and established the first great empire after Noah's flood. He is also traditionally associated with the Tower of Babel. That's you know, right from their dogma. According to tradition, Nimrod sought to turn men away from God by setting up a tyrannical government and setting up a new religion. In fact, the new religion centered around Nimrod and his wife, Semiramis, eventually evolving into Baal worship from which all the pagan religions of the Middle East and Europe later developed. Not only that, but according to the Encyclopedia of Freemasonry, the legend of the craft in the old constitutions Nimrod is one of the founders of masonry. <sighs> Semiramis is the queen of heaven. Okay, at one point in early America, Freemasonry, um, it was stopped and disdained after those of its order murdered a man who told of their doings. But it was resurrected by Albert Pike, a Satanist from North South Carolina, and today the stronghold America is the cause of its undoing. It is because of this stronghold that we are being judged. It has grown like a cancer in America, the beautiful, and has caused it to become America the proud, America the bully, America the self-deluded, America the harlot nation that has turned other nations and adulterated the goals of God into the goals of Satan. We have tested vaccines on Africa, dumped on them our refuse, dumped our refuse in the ocean, spilling, spoiling them as well, spread our prosperity doctrine and, go and gospel of self-promotion to all nations, corrupting the gospel and dehumanizing mankind, taken money from China and Arab nations to keep the illusion all that is going fine, and we can continue in our adulteries to the flesh and Satan. We owe trillions, which will shortly bring us into bondage to these nations with no one to save us unless we turn to God himself and repent of this wickedness. I'm obviously only giving a small portion of our misdeeds, but um, despite this, God wants to use Americans. He wants still to um, bless. Not he, He's not into cursing. We just had a national day of prayer at the time that I had written this, and I wonder how much of it was spent repenting for all this. We have used the women of other nations as prostitutes. We've trafficked in children and women abroad, bringing them here as slaves. And of course, if you go way back, um, much of the nation was founded on slavery. We have used children for labor until labor laws prevented it. And now we use children of other nations to make our shoes, to fulfill our every need. And it is allowed by many in the elitist ranks of this nation, many of whom hold public office and hypocritically pretend to care for the little man while holding investments in Halliburton, Monsanto, Goldman Sachs, Bayer, and many other companies, especially drug companies that are killing and enslaving us. They speak with forked tongues about changing America while putting the screws to the coffins that we're buried in. 
Monsanto is guilty of the murder of children in South Africa, dying of cancer and riddled with diabetes due to Monsanto's donation of GMO corn. Monsanto has had one of its original players, um, Donald Rumsfeld, a good Freemason friend of the Bushes. Monsanto has all kinds of political supporters on its board, including those from FDA and the EPA. Ha, huh, a seemingly conflict of interest. It has robbed farmers in America of their dignity and their retirement funds by taking them to court for seed seeds blowing in their fields from Monsanto-owned farms around them and devastating their life savings and finances and normal good seeds. They've taken over seed companies to decrease the growing of good foods. They, the brainiacs in charge, have allowed emasculation of America literally by giving estrogen to cows, which little boys drink, providing them more estrogen than they, they need and adulterating their hormone systems. And that of women, such as little girls, get their menses at eight and nine years old now and cancer in women increased. All these decisions are orchestrated by agencies that were supposed to be there to protect us. But like John Wimber used to say, sin makes you stupid. And now they want to cut off our supply of vitamin, mineral, and herbal supplements, uh, however they can, that are helping detox and keep us alive. Someone I know heard from someone who worked in a food plant of things being put in foods deliberately to poison us. But then now we find that there's an agenda to the self behind the stronghold hidden to most Americans, yet found boldly plastered on our monuments like the Georgia Guidestones. Google that and see what is written on them, and you can easily see also, if you Google Henry Kissinger's name with population control and see the agenda written down unashamedly in print. We have comedians poo-pooing honest men who try and expose this on TV news, degrading them and calling them insane. So we see the stance of black is white and white is black on a TV in the news. The news in America is so controlled that it has become the news of murders and violence but not much about what is going on in the wider world except when a crisis occurs, and that is dealt with um, quickly. Much of it's not even mentioned to keep the masses calm. In California, we have the Hollywood news versus the real news because people crave to know about their human idols more than what is going on with their fellow men in the world. Their appetites for violence have grown so much now that TV shows depicting murders and the solving of them in great detail such that you could learn various means of torture and death like the woman prophet from Norway said would happen. TV will be filled, she said, with horrible violence that it teaches people to murder and destroy each other and it will be unsafe in our streets. People will copy what they see. There will not only be one station on TV, it will be filled with stations. Um, she did not know the word channel that we use today, therefore she called them stations. TV will be just like the radio where we have many stations and filled with violence. People will use it for entertainment. We will see terrible scenes of murder and destruction, one or the other, and this will be spread in society. Sex scenes will also be shown on the screen and the most intimate things that take place in marriage. Um, the old woman said it will happen and you will see it all. All we have had before will be broken down and the most indecent things will pass before our eyes. Well, now... Every show practically in the evening, like C CSI and NCIS and other medical shows, are filled with gross detail of blood and murder. This 90-year-old Norwegian woman in 1968 also said something that relates to self on the throne or Jezebel in charge of the church. She said the important thing will be to have success, to be something, to have material things, things that God never promised in this way. Churches and prayer houses will be emptier and emptier instead of the preaching we have been used to for generations like to take up your cross and follow Jesus. Entertainment, art, and culture will invade the churches where there should have been gatherings for repentance and revival. This will increase markedly just before the return of Jesus. And I would go on, but um, I would, I don't have much time. So again, I'm going to have to cut this short and do the second half um, with a different prophecy, too, because this one was a little bit longer also. God bless you.